Welcome to the Defense and Aerospace Report. I'm Vagam Radian here at the Surface Navy Association's National Symposium, number one gathering of the U.S. Navy's surface leaders here in Northern Virginia, where our coverage is sponsored by GE Marine and Leonardo DRS. And it's our pleasure to be here at the L3 Harris stand to talk to retired United States Navy Rear Admiral Rick Williams, who is a principal uh, with uh, L3 Harris, proudly wearing your uh, uh, 1110 uh, badge of courage. Open. You got it. You've got your full swell on, and uh, it's tremendous and we were joking about the new black uh, leather jackets. They're sort of modified G1 aviator jackets, but with a plain leather collar that's now authorized very for wear. Cool. Very cool, very cool. It is It is very cool. You can just imagine having your coffee now on the bridge wing uh, while, while doing that. Um, a really action-packed uh, show in a lot of respects, and the renaissance of the surface force, we discussed that with uh, Rear Admiral Black, uh, the N96, uh, a little bit in terms of just the sheer number of programs underway. Uh, you guys are in the electromagnetic spectrum in a big way. You guys are also in unmanned systems in a very big way. The new integrated force structure assessment is going to put a big premium on medium displacement and large displacement unmanned vehicles. You guys have made a huge surface vehicle investment over the years. Talk to us, sir, about how you see that vision evolving and how you guys sort of um, shape your plans to get to where the Navy wants to get? Yeah, great question. Uh, we are excited about aligning with the CNO's maritime strategy and distributed maritime operations. And DMO, distributed maritime operations, really focuses a lot on manned, unmanned systems and integration and using unmanned systems, platforms like the USV uh, with new payloads like uh, command and control for integrated uh, intelligence surveillance targeting capabilities to passively detect, track, and target systems so that our, our manned platforms can remain undetected for greater uh, survivability and improve lethality using our unmanned systems with payloads like BlackRock, which we're offering, which has a very uh, precision, accurate, uh, ISR targeting feature that you could put on MUSV or on uh, manned platforms to work together to do passive targeting uh, for that greater lethality piece I think is going to be very important in the future. And, and talk to us a little bit about BlackRock and how that system works because I think folks sometimes have trouble understanding what a passive uh, targeting system is. Yeah, the U.S. Navy right now works very closely with the Air Force rivet joint signals intelligence and electronic intelligence systems and uh, they work jointly uh, in uh, lots of high, highly contested operational environments. And what we're proposing is taking some of that rivet joint technology and uh, transforming it in a new program called BlackRock, where we're going to put rivet joint-like sensing and, and tracking capabilities onto uh, an Aegis ship or onto a USV. Uh, it's an extraordinary capability, and anybody who understands the RC-135 uh, rivet joint, which is uh, one of the Air Force's most formidable um, intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance platforms. Um, let's talk a little bit about the electromagnetic spectrum. You guys have the spectral system. Talk to us about that and where it fits in terms of the architecture the United States Navy is trying to get to in terms of uh, being able to continue to operate in a very, very contested electromagnetic spectrum. Yeah, great question. So the electromagnetic spectrum now is a domain like cyber, air, maritime, and land. And so uh, to revitalize our current intelligence uh, surveillance reconnaissance systems with a more tactical application where you're actually doing real-time targeting with SIGINT and ELINT in new ways uh, to create a new kill chain that uh, confuses and complicates the adversary's uh, detection and tracking methods, I think is going to be uh, the state of the art and something that we're excited to be part of. And, and how large of a market do you see this as, right? I mean, when uh, uh, Admiral Greenard with CNO started talking about this, folks were just at the early phases of it, whereas now it's much, much more integrated and much bigger. How big of a market opportunity is this at the end of the day? Well, if you take a look at ballistic missile defense or strike 25 years ago, those were new markets, those were new missions. Those were new capabilities and that were growing. Well, now those are really big, formidable missions uh, on all our uh, destroyers. And uh, we see the C4 ISR targeting capability in the electromagnetic maneuver warfare as a, a new mission that's going to be just as big as BMD or Strike. Your retired United States Navy Rear Admiral Rick Williams, uh, who is a principal at L3 Harris, sir. Thanks very much. Uh, Fairwind's following seas on these programs because it's, uh, it's a lot of important work and you guys made a lot of investment to uh, get ready for it. Thank you very much. Appreciate it.